What's up, everybody? It's Keefe from Ghost Cult, Ghost Cult Magazine, GhostCultMag.com, and I am here with Einar from Wadruna here in New York City. How are you doing, Einar? Doing good. Well, it's good to be here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, just the start of the tour, only a couple of dates in mm. uh, before the New York City show, the headline tour for Wadruna. I know you've done some appearances here and guest spots and collaborations. Uh, is, is this the first headline tour for Wadruna in a long time? Uh, yeah, it's 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 basically the the first tour ever in in the U.S. We've done a couple of uh, shows on on the West Coast, uh, but this is the first time here here on the East Coast and and first tour basically. So, and you brought out the big show, sort of a night with uh, opportunity for fans to who, who wanted to see you. Yeah, really uh, experience the full show, which is great. Yeah, it's it's full on. Yeah, no, it feels feels really good to to finally be able to to get through the paper mill of of uh, being able to do 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 proper shows here and yeah well we're grateful you're here i know uh you know a lot of fans always why don't you come to the u.s and it's difficult it's expensive there's co uh, you know a lot of things involved in making it work we're glad you're here this is going to be amazing tonight um i did want to start off by asking though what was the preparation for the tour like because obviously you have uh, you know, this trilogy of records, the Rune Trilogy to support, but also, you know, uh, could be, you know, how do you choose a set list? What does the preparation and rehearsal go into? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're, our, our, um, the, the whole setup is, is pretty, pretty well, um, how do I say, we, we've been doing this for, uh, for quite a while, the, so, so the routine is pretty much worked in. Uh, and uh, I don't know preparations. We we did like a week and a half ago, or two weeks ago. We did um, three shows in a row uh, in uh, in in uh, in Europe. Um, so that was sort of a good preparation. We could, uh, um, yeah. But but the idea is uh, to to sort of do the same as as we do. Uh, uh, Always do tell tell the story uh, and and uh, sort of um, yeah. Unfortunately, we can't do all songs from all albums, but uh, it's it's yeah. We try to to sort of um, tell the story of the trilogy basically, um, and uh, so yeah. Awesome, and we're looking forward to that. I can't wait. Um, I definitely wanted to discuss. You know, uh, clearly, uh, beside the fact that fans have been clamoring <coughs> for you guys to tour here extensively for a long time, um, I is it something, uh, you know, obviously you go to other countries and fans approach you, and is it, is it here? So, uh, you guys have had a couple of nights here already. Uh, what's it like with the fans? What's that experience like? You know, are they... Uh, I have only good things to, to say. We, we have the... <laughs> I, I feel that we have the the best fans and and uh, and they are yeah every time we we try to uh, whenever we we have the possibility to do a meet and greet uh, we, we always try to to make that happen and and uh, yeah to meet everybody who, who supports us and and uh, that means uh, it means a lot to us and and uh, so to be able to look into to to their eyes and shake their hands uh, that that's uh, yeah uh, that's a. I think it's a part of, part of the the deal basically. Uh, to to, yeah, to um, show show our appreciation also. Very yeah. good. Um, I definitely also wanted to ask you. So obviously we're at the end the end of the trilogy, but now you're just sharing it. Uh, you know the album's been out for about a year, maybe a little less. And uh, you know obviously like most of your releases, they're pretty acclaimed. I found the third one to be my favorite personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I know other people will probably think the first one because it was a little more time with that one before the second release. But uh, now that, that it's complete, uh, you know, have you thought about what's next? Or are you just kind of living with this trilogy for now as it is? <clears throat> uh, no, uh, you know, uh, this trilogy um, um, has taken 15 some or something like that years to uh, to to create so uh, and along the way I've had tons of ideas and things I that I wanted to do so um, um, so uh, there is no no resting time you know for me Valdruna is not I don't separate 
Barduna from from myself very much. So so uh, it's that's that's an ongoing process. Uh, so if I'm done with an album, that doesn't really matter. I I continue to to create and to plan and and. Uh, uh, yeah, so so there are <laughs> there are many uh, many plans and there are still many many things I want to make music to and 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 uh, so you'll uh, yeah I'm working on new music that's that's the short answer. Wonderful, <laughs> no, that's great. And uh, you know, you mentioned I was at the seminar you held last night at Rough Trade Records in Brooklyn. Shout out to Rough Trade; they've been very good to Ghost Cult. We've done a lot of stuff there. Mm. Um, and you said something really profound, I felt, um, it, which is um, about authenticity, that you decided very early on for your songwriting that you wanted to stay authentic at all times. You could cheat, but you wouldn't feel as true an artist, uh, uh, condensing what you said, basically. But uh, I wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about that, because I think it's very important to, uh, I would love for fans to hear what you had to say about that. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, Authentic in terms of being historically authentic, that's not necessarily important to me. Uh, well, although uh, th th it's there, but it's not about recreating the past. Uh, it's more about making something new with something old. But in terms of staying true to the whole concept of trying to, to interpret these uh, runes or different themes I'm working on, uh, I, I decided at an early stage to, to not... Um, yeah, to not to not take any shortcuts, ba basically, and not cheat. I could, um, yeah. The 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 whole idea is that to to to, uh, um, yeah, to 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 try and stay as close as possible to the to what it is I'm interpreting. So if I'm writing a song for for the rune of the birch tree, I go into the forest and play on birch trees, etc., and implement that into the music, or go to places of relevance to what it is I'm working with or even recording on specific dates, etc. The, the list goes on. And, and that has, of course, made it a very extensive project, time consuming and, and a lot of planning, a lot of trial and error, uh, because I'm always hunting for, f for a specific feeling or uh, to catch some s spark of anything. And, and of course, I could chop off a table leg and and get the same sound as a birch, but I'm I'm 100% co convinced that that um, the listener would know the difference, uh, whether or not that's consciously or subconsciously. That's that doesn't matter, but but added value is added value. Uh, yeah, so staying true to that is has been uh, important, uh, but <laughs> of course, uh, yeah, made it very challenging as well. And probably very gratifying at the end, also a lot more. Of gratifying. course, <coughs> like I, I, in terms of favorite albums and and stuff like that, you have to remember that uh, this is um, has also been a, a a journey for me, sort of a almost like an initiation, uh, both towards learning how these instruments work and and. Uh, yeah, the, the first Wadruna uh, album, that's the first album I ever produced and recorded. Um, so, and also, they, they vary a lot in, in what, yeah, the, the runes are different on, on uh, all the albums. So, um, so uh, naturally, since I'm trying to stay as close to, to what it is I'm interpreting uh, as possible, the albums will... Uh, vary in how they sound as well. The first one is is about sowing a seed, like the and and creation and and this slow process basically. And and you can hear that on the album as well. It's much more monotonous. And and the second one is about nurturing that seed, making it grow. So growth and and uh, and you f you can feel that as well. That that that. The second album is more energetic in, in a sense, and uh, I, I feel personally that the the second one, which is the transformation, where you, uh, yeah, the death and rebirth, uh, that that has sort of elements of both the previous albums, but it takes it a step further. So um, it, do, it perhaps it doesn't have the strongest songs necessarily, but uh, it's. 
definitely the the album I feel is most balanced uh, from my own um, perspective. And I'm glad you mentioned the instruments because obviously uh, that you're on tour and I know you uh, have mastered or are still mastering these uh, antiquated Norse instruments. You said some of them are thousands of years old, uh, some only hundreds, but I was going to ask you for touring. Does that make it uh, difficult to tour with these instruments? You have, you know, uh, transporting them around, flying them internationally. I always wondered about that because these things seem pretty fragile, uh, even though you are very, uh, you know, adept at them. So I was wondering yeah, well, about that. One thing is to travel with them because there are, uh, uh, you can't go to a store and and, uh, <laughs> and buy new ones. So it's it is with a lot of anxiety you you sort of send them. Uh, uh, with uh, to the airline and and hope hope uh, they will um, end up where they are supposed to end up. Right. Uh, but but also what's challenging is that uh, with these nature instruments, as, uh, especially, is that um, uh, and that's a good and challenging thing. Uh, they have a they have a will of their own in, in a sense because they are organic. They are live material so they are very sensi sensitive to to temperature and moist and 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 that stuff so especially performing outdoors can be hmm. quite a struggle uh, which one would you say is the most temperamental of all these instruments uh well the drums are of course quite uh, uh can be challenging especially outdoor concerts but but also the string instruments um uh but yeah, but even like the the goat horns, if 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 uh, it ha there has been occasions where I've sort of uh, uh, yeah late in the in the show, uh, cold night outdoors, and pick up my the goat horn and and yeah gonna do a epic uh, <laughs> melody and and basically end up sounding like a sick cow or something. <laughs> so, but that that's that's the name of the game. That also adds tension and and uh, and focus uh, for me on stage as well because um, I I know I I might have to adapt uh, my my own uh, um, approach to how I play it. Sometimes I have to change up completely how I'm to play them. Uh, so it, it adds also nerve and tension in a good way. Friction is fruitful. Friction is fruitful. Hashtag that, people. That's awesome. Um, I just have a couple more questions for you. Uh, obviously, of course, you're also promoting your just released EP, Snake Pit Poetry, yeah. um, which is fantastic on Binaurus Recordings, your company you're part of, as well as indie uh, records um, like Wadruna releases. And uh, I love the EP. It's amazing. And Thank I love you. that you were telling the story, uh, the, the historic and poetic uh, Snake Pit story mm. that uh, everybody is familiar with in popular culture. But uh, I really found it to be really um, even a little more contemplative and deep, if you will, than the typical other releases you've been part of. So I really am enjoying the EP. What was that like for you to put out this record? Will we get more of these uh, recordings? Yeah, you know, I've uh, the last couple of years I've I've been doing quite a lot of uh, these solo performances uh, <clears throat> where where I basically strip it totally down, uh, both uh, performing Wadruna material, but also also stuff I've done for Vikings. Uh, that's what where the Snake Pit poetry song. Uh, uh, came about that was actually uh, um, I, I was asked by by um, Vikings uh, uh, head honcho uh, Michael Hurst sure. to to um, to if I could write uh, sort of a, a lament for for Ragnar for for this specific scene where he's thrown into a pit of snakes and and that's where that comes from I, I went into to uh, yeah researching uh, old poems of him and, and of course found this uh, this is perhaps the most famous poem um, no I, I I find the format to be to be very uh, interesting to work with and and uh, so so I that's definitely one of the things I'm, I'm uh, planning to to uh, make a release of uh, both both stuff I've done for Vikings but also uh, this uh, fully acoustic format. Nice. And I'm glad you mentioned Vikings. I know it's some, something uh, that's, uh, you know, becoming increasingly, uh, you know, more, more uh, 
prominent in your life. The last uh, half season of Vikings just ended. For those that don't watch the show, Vikings on History Channel, free plug. And um, Einar is now responsible for most of the music on the show. Actually, I don't know if you're officially the music supervisor, but I've seen your name on every credit. And uh, I, some of my favorite passages of the show have had your music, uh, whether it was just ordinary scenes or battle scenes or whatever. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the show, so I'm really proud of you and happy that this has happened for you. And you mentioned that um, Michael Hurst has actually approached you. Do you get to see scenes before you score them or are you just kind yeah, of... Yeah, um, yeah. First, I have to say that the, the main composer of the show, that's that's Trevor Morris. Sure. And, uh, well, they, they've, they have um, used quite a lot of Waduna music ever since season one. And But before season two, they... I was approached by production to, to um, because they wanted to sort of have the sounds more in the heart of the show, and and so I, I collaborated quite a bit on the soundtrack uh, together with uh, Trevor, and um, uh, um, and and also uh, <coughs> and of course when you work on the soundtrack, then then you have to to work with the images. So so that's I, I do quite a lot of that. Um, for the for the last season and uh, the last two seasons, I, I've done a lot of um, things directly for uh, for production as well. I haven't worked so much with uh, Trevor on the last season, uh, so it's mostly been been these on camera musical things. Like whenever you see the actors sing something or or religious uh, scenes like funerals or or. Uh, ceremonies or even battle cries and stuff like that uh, that's something i write for them and uh yeah it's it's great fun i have to say uh, yeah well wonderful we're really happy for you and uh again i highly recommend everybody check out the show and the soundtrack uh once again einar from wardruna and many other projects it's been a pleasure and an honor to talk to you thank you for bringing this living norse music to fans heavy music fans and otherwise who have uh, come into your sphere Thank you for, uh, yeah, for having me, and uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm Keefe from Ghost Cult. We're out. Thank you.